Hi, my name is Carolina Lara, and I'm here today to demonstrate what things you can do and create at home with the cake plate ice malt nibs. We are going to recreate this frame piece that I have created with the cake plate ice malt nibs in bronze color. You may choose any color you desire. There's a wide range, uh, range of colors. I just picked the bronze because it's one of my favorite colors and I just love the appearance of the sugar. You can also use a little bit of these photo frost images over here to actually enhance your sugar piece. So anyone of any skill level will be able to do this at home. First, I'm going to ask you to get a bag of your favorite color. In this case, like I mentioned before, I'm going to use the bronze. One bag will give you enough to create this piece. You want to follow the instructions carefully as indicated in the package. I have preheated this one a little bit just for purposes of this video and make it a little bit quicker. Hopefully it's heated enough. You normally just want to do it in 20 seconds intervals. You will probably have to go back and forth a couple of times to get it completely melted. As you can see here, I'm using a skewer just to kind of like make sure that I got all the pieces melted. Look at those pretty colors there. And that's a really good consistency for pouring. So I think I'm ready. Put that aside. Now I have a mold that I actually created out of a picture frame that I liked as well. And I am going to, before I pour the isomalt in the mold, I am actually going to use a little bit of butter because I don't want the isomalt to stick to my mold. Now, there are some molds that you're not going to need to do that, so it's all going to depend on the brand that you have. You don't really have to apply a lot. I'm just doing it very lightly. You can also use a brush if you want to actually go into every piece of, uh, of the mold, the crevices. But this is really done for purposes of it not sticking. You really don't want your isomalt to stick to your mold. And very carefully, we start pouring the isomalt in your mold. Now this is gonna take a little more than just a couple of minutes or seconds, just because there's a lot of detail on this mold. And if you realize, I'm not pouring way high like that, just taking it nice and slow, just to prevent air bubbles. And making sure I get all those little corners. I'm not rushing it. Even though you should work with a little bit of speed because it does get hard after a little while. But one of the things that I like about doing a frame with cake plate isomalt nibs is actually you can get all those pretty details of it that sometimes it's a little difficult to recreate with fondant or with gum paste. This really goes all the way in. You want to be very careful while you're doing it too. Here we go. Okay, now that I've poured my isomalt, my cake plate isomalt nibs in the mold, I am going to move it closer to a fan, um, to the fan that I have here on my right, just because I want to cool the isomalt down a little bit. Okay, so while this is cooling down, what I wanted to show you is how do I make this piece actually stand? So I actually have these molds here, uh, and you're going to see in the back here, I made these beautiful little stands with those molds, and that's what we're going to create with this. Now I'm going to uh, demonstrate how did I get this clear part done. And it's very easy, actually. What I did was I started by using a silicone stencil mat that is also sold by Cake Play. It comes in a 12 by 12, which you can then just cut it up to the size that you actually need. But if you don't want to buy a big piece, they have a different, um, different sizes available. So in this case, I actually just took um, a 12 by 12 and I cut it down to the size that I wanted uh, for a previous project. And what I did was, with some other pieces that I actually had, I made a frame for it. 
So I don't really need this gigantic piece because this is actually bigger, you see it's bigger than the frame. So what I did was I took some pieces that I had available and I kind of just framed it enough so that I could get the size that I wanted. So now I got the width and I just adjust this a little bit. There we go. Now these stencil mats are fantastic because if you want to do a monogram or you want to do um, something that you would like to just use um, like a stencil, you know, you can actually do pieces that are flat and then with this technique you're going to learn how you can actually take a flat piece and then just sand it up. And in this case we're just going to be using these pieces of um, isomol that I put in the back over here. So I am going to heat up a little bit of clear. And this won't take that long. Let me check it. Make sure it's important consistency. And I am going to pour it very carefully on my sill pad. Now, the sill pad, when you pour isomol in it, it kind of has already like a texture in the, on the bottom. So it does come through your design when you're pouring it. It kind of gives it like a texture in the back. It's not really important in this moment, but if you're really picky about it and you really want it to be clear, then you can get a vinyl that will actually give you that nice, transparent, and clear appearance that makes it really look like if it were real glass. I like to use my little toothpick here to try to get into those little corners. Now, I have previously cut out with these Photo Frost icing sheets, and these are the brand new um, shimmer line. And I took the gold one and I actually used a scrapbook cutter. And if you can look here, um, you'll see that this is just a paper puncher. Um, and you really, people say like, oh, I don't want to use anything that's not food safe. If you use anything that's scrapbooking, just use it for your kitchen. Once you use it for that, don't use it for anything else because you can create cross-contamination and that's not good, okay? And I cut out these, and this is just like if it were paper. I mean, the flexibility on it is just awesome. So it's very easy to mold, you know, in shape. And then I'm going to go ahead after I cut it, and I'm just gonna put it right there on top. Very gently. Oops. There you go. Okay. And then you want to let this really cool. If you start fussing with it and you start moving it before time, you're not really going to get that glass look. It's going to just look a little warped, and that's not what we're going for here. So I'm just going to put the fan a little bit closer and move one of the molds. Now, this mold should be ready to unmold. Let's check. Oh, lovely. And here you have, it takes like approximately, probably 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for it to cool down. I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so we're at the step that once this piece has cooled down, we'll remove it from the pad, from the stencil mat. So you can see right now, this is where we're at. And I'm going to attach two more butterflies. And this will actually give it a dimension so it doesn't look flat. Now, there's nothing wrong with flat. I just want to make it interesting and show you that you can really get creative with these two together. There you go. That looks like a butterfly in flight right now. These are pretty flexible, but you don't want to leave them out 
for an hour because they will shatter. So it is made with sugar. And carefully just apply it. Now I like to sh give it a little more drama, just a little bit of shape to it. So it doesn't look so static. You don't really look at a butterfly and it has the wings straight. They actually have a little curve to it. Alrighty. Now, how do we attach this to the frame? I have here my frame that has been cooled down and I'm going to put it on the side. And I'm going to apply a little bit of isomal on the edge and I'm going to use it as, as if it were glue. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because this part is not going to be seen. Alrighty. Another use for your toothpick. Alrighty. Kind of position it exactly how I want it. Now at this point, this is what we have. Now I'm going to attach the pieces to create the stand on my piece. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of my isomalt on the back of my piece. Now you might be wondering, well Carolina, you know, I would have done this at the end, that's fine. You can do it at the end. You don't have to do it in the same order I'm doing it. All you have to do, in all honesty, is do it the way it's going to work for you. And I think that that's my best, um, uh, my best way of saying people, listen, just pick up what you really like and you can do it and just do it your way. Now I'm just going to pour a little bit of this isomalt here. I'm going to use this as my glue. I'm going to attach this piece. Now, the whole reason why I'm holding it is because I want to make sure I got the right angle. If I do this when it's flat, I really won't be able to see the angle that I'm going to have until I lift it. It's not really going to work that way. Now I'm going to pour a little bit on this side, so just a little bit on the frame. Again, take the piece and attach it and I quickly lift it to make sure both sides have the same angle and it's not wobbly. This is why I actually do it with it in an angle. Now you can see here we have the finished product. This is what I started with and you can see I got a little more um, fancier and I decided that I wanted to use some squirrels. I had a little bit of the isomalt left in my isomalt cup and, um, and I just did some swirls and you can do whatever works for you. I mean, you, if you want to stop on the stage where you just apply the butterflies on it because you just don't want to do the 3D effect, that is fine as well. And then you can just do some swirls on top of, um, of this one or simply just leave it as is. Now another thing you can do with this is if you don't want to use um, a cutter and let's say for example you're doing an anniversary cake or you're doing um, something that it, you want to use a photo uh, frame for. You can actually put the couple's picture in here. You can also uh, put a drawing or a hand painting on it. It doesn't always have to be the same thing. Just get creative and that's what we do here at Cake Play.